Good afternoon, Kate Robin, sitting in for Nick Coffer this week and next week. And uh, I hope you're going to have a lovely afternoon with me um, this lovely sunny day. And joining me in the studio are Ben Hodgson and Ian Rowlands, who are part of the ATP media team. And they're going to tell you what that means. Based in Luton's Hat Factory, they call themselves social innovators. And they've recently got back from a trip to Iraq, where they ended up on the side of a mountain with paintbrushes in hand. Now... Why? Well, it was all to do with an ongoing project called Iraq, A Changing Heart. Welcome to the studio, guys. So first of all, Ben, how did this trip come about? Tell us all about it. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's a few years in the making. In 2007, we got together with a lot of creative people that we knew. Um, and we put together an international artist collective, which was basically a loosely affiliated uh, organisation that brought people together who created things that were beautiful. Artists. Um, artists, essentially, but across a lot of mediums. Um, and we created something called A Thin Place. And the ah, that's what ATP stands for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now I know. And very basically, it was this uh, ancient Celtic idea of the divide between heaven and earth becoming thin. And it's about places, events, people, where you get a sense of something much greater. So as artists, uh, we connect with people who are very big on using the things that they did, created paintings, photography, film, and used it to, to affect the earth in something much, much greater. So peacemaking, social change, all that kind of thing. Wow. Um, yeah. That's quite a big, big it's a clip, mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> so and how how about you, Ian? You went you went with Ben to do this? Yeah, I mean the the original trip came about in two thousand and eight. I was um, <clears throat> I was in a speaking at a conference in Turkey because uh, we do a lot of stuff across the world. So we were right. sp- I was speaking at a conference in Turkey, and a, a friend of mine, Jeremy Courtney, who I, I'd known for some years, but uh, was there speaking also. And he spoke about how his organisation, Preemptive Love Coalition, which is a kind of Christian organisation... was Love take- Coalition. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> you see, I'm an old hippie. I'm an old hippie. <laughs> I love yeah. all that. Love Coalition. I like that. That's nice. So the Preemptive Love Coalition, which the idea of it really is, is that uh, rather than pre- Preemptive strikes in war, we do preemptive love. Um, so, oh. so you'd like that even better as, a, as an old hippie, you know? Because so, I like that as yeah, well, I being there's, an old hippie. There's a, <laughs> there's a company called Kiss, uh, kissbank.com. Have you heard yeah, about them? They, yeah. did, they, they trade in kisses and hugs. Anyway, that's another story. <laughs> that's another programme. <laughs> so anyway, he was telling this story about how his, his organisation, which had been set up from a Christian perspective, was taking Muslim children to Jewish doctors for heart surgeries so i just loved the story so we sat down over but bre- hang on a second why why should a muslim child not go to a jewish doctor well in, absolutely yeah well we agree with that but actually it does break down a lot of barriers that, that surely that, the hippocratic oath means that all doctors have to treat anybody who's yeah it's not so much from the doctor's perspective the problem actually was it was more from the cultural aspects mm. of of the people um within within that within that aspect so okay so it was a so i saw um a photograph of some of the work that you did in iraq yeah. would you call it work work of art yeah <laughs> and it said what did it, you painted on a mountain yeah we um we painted a prob- possibly a provocative statement but we painted peace for luton and very that is quite provocative yeah because i love luton and i don't find it an unpeaceful place but obviously you have something to say there yeah very very basically as um in, in was saying about the preemptive love coalition they had started using a bit of art in iraq and the region to tell their story and we just dreamed about the idea of bringing those stories over to the uk and showing people in europe and the west and maybe even ultimately the states and places like that um and that kicked off, so in 2009 we brought over a load of exhibitions, we showed them in um, Luton and around the place, in local um, counties and places, and from that we connected with an artist called Ishmael Hayat, and this guy is he's a Kurdish artist, but he's one of the most famous in the region, so he's this wonderful Ishmael old guy. Hayat. Ishmael Hayat, he's... he's He's just literally like the grandfather of Kurdish art. Everyone over there respects him. And very simply, in the year 2000, he went to an area which was in the Kurdish area of Iraq where the political factions, I believe PDK and PUK, Kurdish factions, they were shooting each other, they were killing each other. And the story goes in the year 2000 that he painted the side of a mountain. And it was literally almost about two kilometres of mountain. I think I read about that at the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, it got yeah, out there a little I bit. Do, yes, because when I was reading about you, 
that came to mind actually yeah mm. so yeah. you were inspired by that absolutely inspired by it. it's one of i mean i i, I teach part-time at university and i've done academic research most of my research has been based on how can art change the world and out of everything i've looked at right the way from picasso's guernica to war photography this one artist who's maybe not world renowned but certainly you know respected seems to have intervened and through his provocative kind of literally intervening in a war zone kicked off a peace process Everyone wow. we spoke to said, yeah, this guy kicked it off. They, obviously, there's a lot of anecdotal kind of evidence. <coughs> it's very hard to substantiate exactly what happened. But everything we found out seems to point to the fact that this did that. So when we when we got to know him and he literally came and stayed with us over here in Luton and, and mm. he, he painted on everything, he sat there and he found all our recycling and painted on a loo roll all this kind of so, beautiful so, so stuff. So really you're saying that, you know, art, I mean, art in, in the greater sense of art, meaning the arts, like music as well, mm-hmm. that can break down the barriers between Absolutely. cultures and people yeah. who are warring yeah. yeah so you went there you painted a mountain well, peace for luton yeah very basically because he had done this thing and we were inspired by it we said can we go to this mountain we'd love to see what this thing looks like is it still there is it is it well, all the rest of it and we thought we'd go there we'd photograph it we'd we'd take you know maybe some video and we, we are shooting a documentary out this we're like well this could go into the document that's really exciting and we just put out a little feeder which was could we reenact something and i think in in mine and ian's mind we we were assuming that would mean a bit of a paint yeah a, a pot of paint would go up there do a little thing um it ended up turning out to be we got there and the day before we went out he goes oh I've booked the bus and we're like what What bus he's like well for the 20 artists I'm like what 20 artists I've booked the bus to take us to Iraq yeah and it's like well well, for the ton of paint that the gallery's given me we're like oh, wow okay. a ton of paint's a lot of paint it was a lot of paint and and then before we know it on a bus and they're turning around to us going guys this was your idea why are we here and we're looking at each other going we have no idea why we're here what's going on <laughs> so it was, it was quite amazing really oh well listen it's lovely talking to you we're going to be talking um, more more with Ben and Ian about uh, their uh, peace process and painting and art and Iraq and how it all comes together. And meanwhile, let's have a little bit of colour. Here's Simply Red. I'm Kate Robbins, sitting in for Nick Coffer, and I have in the studio with me Ben Hodson and Ian Rowlands, who went to Iraq to paint a mountain with a message of peace. Guys, it must have been quite... Was it quite hot when you were painting that mountain? 43 degrees. That's hotter than it is today. No shade. <laughs> really? <laughs> and we both forgot our hats. Oh, great. So let's just say I got a bit moist. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've looked at photographs of the of the, uh, the the painting on the mountain and it, and it looks great. You know, it says peace in Luton. And a lot of people, I mean, I have to put forward the other argument. And, you know, a lot of people would just say to you that that is graffiti. And I don't know if you did that in this country, would it be illegal? I don't think the National Heritage would probably support lots of paint over the countryside. No, we don't want to encourage people <laughs> around here to go to the Chiltern Hills yeah. and start daubing, do we? No, no, we don't. So you got away with it, really, because because you were in a territory that wasn't going to yeah. challenge it? Well, if you, if you understand the context, while we were there, we found bullets and shells in the ground. Um, so the reality of the place, what that beautiful art installation did in 2000 and our reenactment did recently is far more important than the very minor you know, environmental damage. Yes. It's about rising above it and showing some common humanity between some of the most difficult cultural, religious, because this is across you know, Sunni Shiites, across Kurd Arab, across mm. Turk Kurd, Turk Arab. All of these tensions are going on and to, in the middle of that, say... You know, were we you, can work towards peace. Were you working with Iraqi artists yes. doing it? Yeah. And absolutely. did they not want the message to be written in their own language? I mean, were they happy for it to be written in English? Uh, it was in both. Um, so they did ah, it. Ah, you see. Uh, we didn't see the photograph of that. I uh, know. Uh, well, we, we've been careful how much we've released so far. Because, uh, you know, this is an unfolding story for us. So yeah. it's So we, we don't want to get too much out there too soon. No. But, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and would you... I mean, you, I said to you guys before you came on air... Are you artists? It's a very basic question, isn't it? And I yeah. suppose the word artist, if it got an E on the end of it, mm. it's artiste, you know, you're, mm. you're an artiste, meaning <laughs> an actor or a musician or whatever. But as an artist who paints, um, but you rather call yourself a social innovator. Mm. Yeah. Or even social entrepreneur, I yeah. think. Oh, social entrepreneur. It sounds posh. Get Alan Sugar on the phone. <laughs> Quick. <laughs> you're fired. Yeah. <laughs> you well, explain yeah. that in? Because. 
Well, I, I think for us, the whole aspect of uh, of what we do is about finding creative and social, uh, creative and innovative solutions to social issues. That's really what we're looking uh, looking to do. So art does a great job of doing that. So part of what we do is using art to do that. Well, it's fascinating talking to you, and uh, we're going to be talking some more. Meanwhile, back to my innovative no social innovative no social entrepreneurs let's call you all right i'm going to call you artists <laughs> we have uh, we have ben and ian rollins uh, ben hodgson and ian rollins um who've been to iraq um as artists and have painted a mountain out there with a message of peace for luton now guys did you start off when you were when you were young for example ben did you did you know you were going to end up painting and being artistic um well, my mother was an artist and my father um, was an entrepreneur in a business sense. So I think from, ah. the, from the outset, I think there was this, this kind of dual thing of being creative um, and actually using it to, you know, have a positive impact yes. on the society around you. Um, and I think, Ian, your story is fairly similar in terms Ian, of... We- were you? How were you brought up? Were you brought up with a paintbrush? Born with a paintbrush in your in your mouth? Well, I can't say that because neither of my parents were really artistic. But I was always the artistic one. So I, sometimes I, I got a little bit uh, bullied in our family for that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but did you go to college, art art school? I mean, would you encourage um, youngsters today who who want to go into any kind of you know textiles, art, creative crafts, whatever? Would you encourage somebody to go to art school? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I probably should say this because I do work for the University of Bedfordshire in the art department, so I'll, I'll just do a little plug there. Yes, come to the University of Bedfordshire, have excellent courses. Yes. And they can pay me later for that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think... I if, have an uh, honorary degree from the University of Bedfordshire. Fantastic. I'll have oh. you know. I am Kate Robbins' BA, but anyway, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think what, what colleges uh, and university courses give you is a bit of space to just explore your ideas, learn your craft, and to just be in a peer environment that really pushes you, so. Well, you're certainly innovative artists, I'll give you that. In the meantime, I am talking to my wonderful innovative artists, or social innovators as they call themselves, Ian Rowlands and Ben Hodgson, who went to Iraq and painted a mountain. I don't want to make that sound... I don't want to be dismissive about that. I know you make documentaries and stuff. Tell tell me, you you were mentioning to me before that when you were in Iraq, you ended up on the equivalent of um, the sort of Rich and Judy kind of morning programme, or this morning with Philip Schofield type show. What happened there? You were you were working and you didn't know you were going to end up on it or something? Well, very basically, we had uh, we had a number of TV channels in the region come and interview us, and partly we had an exhibition while we were out there as well. So they all came, they interviewed us, and they said, "Oh, we've got one more tomorrow." And I went, "Oh, fantastic! Make sure you dress smart." Okay, and I assumed we'd be going back. the gallery we'd be doing the usual thing and now they pulled up uh, with a car blacked out windows and the door opened and i didn't know anyone in it and i'm thinking i don't know what abduction looks like but i'm pretty (laughs) sure this might be it wow and so i get in and they didn't really speak a lot of english and i said so where we where we going and And they they took you off to a tv studio they took me off to a tv studio i went oh you're recording a show okay and I, i turn up and they're like yep you're on in five and i was like on what and I said, I don't speak Kurdish, I don't speak Arabic, how is this going to happen? So presumably this programme goes across to Syria, Iran, yeah, Turkey, Iraq. Yeah. Kurdish-speaking world and gets translated as well. So it was quite an experience, but yeah, the equivalent of maybe the one show or yeah, Richard and Judy, it was, it was quite... Yeah. So say so that... Uh, they, obviously, you, you spoke in English. Yes, uh, directly translated, and most of the translation went well. Um, but because we, we were talking about common humanity and how that we have perceptions in the West about what the Middle East is like and vice versa, some of the translation didn't come out brilliantly, and one of them did say something along the lines of, everyone here thinks they're all suicide bombers and terrorists. And, and you come away from that going... I didn't really say that, but mm. it's um, it was a good experience, and I think the message of peace and art yeah. got out there. So just to reiterate uh, about your mountain, because it is it is a remarkable mm. sight when you see the the art that you produced. Now uh, you painted on the side of a mountain, uh, peace for Luton, and uh, just for people who've just tuning in, uh, as a, a statement, obviously, um, and and you know art being able to break down barriers between uh, warring factions, countries, and uh, cultures. Mm. Are you yourself, uh, Ian, are you a, a painter yourself? Did you? No, I actually came to Luton 30 years ago actually to study photography. 
So I'm more of a photo- photographer than I am a, a, a painter. So I spent most of the day uh, uh, when we paint them, taking photographs and interviewing people and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's difficult to... Uh, obviously, you take a photograph of what you've done out there. And as I was saying before, a lot of people, if you did that in this country, it would be classed as illegal, wouldn't it, to yeah. paint a mountain? So did you feel a bit mischievous doing it? A little bit. And <laughs> I mean, the irony didn't kind of get away from us either in in the sense that a lot of these people were talking about how this project really helps them to connect with nature and those kinds of things and then you're putting loads of paint on the 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 side of a mountain I'm sure uh, a lot of uh, geologists or whatever wouldn't approve at all (laughs) and it's quite sort of uh, bright colours isn't it yeah I sort of seem to remember pinks and yellow yellows blues yeah greens yeah I mean really bright ones as well not you know not kind of pastel colours (laughs) so do you guys have a, a, a gallery I mean you can't really take a mountain into a gallery. <laughs> about take the mountain to, you can't take a mountain into a gallery. How you know? Do you take photographs of this and then exhibit in that way, yeah. or do you have different mediums that you use? Uh, we yeah we we've actually exhibited a lot of different stuff. We take the photographs, we exhibit, we travelled around. We've had I know ten, twelve different exhibitions at different times. So yeah, mm. but we've got a lot of the artwork from the region and from the artists that were on the mountain. We've got a lot of their artwork as well. But can I ask you a basic question that a lot of people ask of artists? And that is, have you got any money? (laughs) Because artists are renowned for being poor, (laughs) apart from Damien Hirst, who's absolutely loaded, and Tracy Emin. Oh, and there's a few more. But, you know, how do you live? And how are you self-funding? Have you got some sort of funding there? Well, we haven't got a sugar daddy. <laughs> no. <laughs> we've, um, part of what we did, uh, out of the social stuff that we've done, is that we've started some commercial um, ventures as well. So Good. We have, That's so great. We, so we have a, a, what we call a community of companies called uh, the ATP community. So it has a media company, social enterprise company, a consultancy company. Go on, explain what ATP is again, because I like that. I'll let, I'll let him do that. That's you, Ben. A thin place, but that the strap line we rolled with at the beginning was a place for creativity in community, peacemaking and social change and through explain, the arts. And explain why a thin place is... Because it, it it's nothing to do with losing weight. No, it's not. Um, we have had a few people ask us about that, and uh, if you looked at the team, you probably... Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> down um, but... Very basically, because Ian is a uh, a Welsh guy, he loves ancient Celtic ideas, and he he talked about this idea that had come from a spiritual concept of the divide between heaven and earth becoming thin. And so I've had a I've had my first baby girl recently, and standing there and witnessing the birth of my first child, yeah. you just got a sense of something so much bigger than the everyday. And I think for us, it was about affecting earth and affecting people in positive ways that gives you that sense of something much much bigger. Well, I put it to you, now you've got a little baby girl, you might not have as much time to go and paint mountains, but, um, I, I, you know, how, how in your everyday, you say you're a photographer, Ian, yeah. and you are you using the medium of photography or painting mostly, which is your most preferred choice of medium? Uh, definitely photography would be mine. Um, and yours, Ben? I, I, certainly, if you'd asked me five, six years ago, I would have said I'm just a photographer. But over time, I think um, I'm much more like... There's an artist called Jeremy Della. He's quite famous. He's in the South Bank at the moment. And he he uses people and situations like a painter would use a paintbrush. And I think for me, it's about, uh, you know, actually the whole you know, the whole action of going to Iraq and putting on an exhibition of images from Luton, which was the other thing we did, that in itself... It's quite contentious, isn't it? Because, you know, there was was a lot of friction when the troops came back to Luton. and, And when you were out there, were you working with Iraqi artists? Yes directly and I think for us it's most important if we went out as you, just outsiders How do you find that then? How do you go about finding Iraqi artists? Well the original contact came through the Preemptive Love Coalition they, this, this group of artists were around their organisation trying to help them to publicise uh, in a good way what was happening So mm. um, Okay, now Ben, you're a member of the International Guild of Visual Peacemakers. <laughs> Sounds posh, doesn't it? Yeah. Not yeah. cheesemakers, peacemakers. <laughs> Blessed are the cheesemakers. Blessed yeah. are the cheesemakers. Yeah. 
come on, tell us about the International Guild of Visual Peacemakers. I love the sound of that. They, they are an incredible organisation. We're all loosely affiliated um, and we're basically ambassadors for them, I think is the title they've given us. Yeah. Um, and what it is, is an international cohort of people who use visual means, so mostly photographers and filmmakers, but also other creatives who use what they do to not only... Um, create visual media with an ethical code but actually the way that you absorb it so we've got a world that's saturated with imagery with mm. news with images and it's about actually going that using those skills or, or the way that we just interact with it and looking to actually bridge gaps between communities at odds and look for some strands of common humanity and not to pretend that there aren't tensions because there are no. tensions but are you going to with your work with peace i mean are you going to look at war-torn areas all over the world and try and bring your art mm. to these areas or i mean you chose iraq mm. because of the, the war that had been there i mean why why didn't you go to afghanistan you know are you going to go to syria etc i mean what's really important for us is to tell stories that are not necessarily being told so you know in iraq we hear you know it's like a highway to hell isn't it that's just the kind of way we think about those well we that tend kind of to stuff. because of the media coverage is only negative but we knew that there were other stories really positive stories to be told there as well so that's good, yeah so a lot of a lot of um what we're looking at doing is telling stories that haven't been told that are positive that show how he the common humanity that we have can overcome the issues that we have with one another as well but it's interesting you say telling stories but you actually are talking about painting stories Stories. Yeah, that's not true. telling stories. Yeah, well, painting we, your story. Yeah, but we do both. Um, you know, we've got blogs and I, even our art. The way in which we set up an exhibition tells the story. Okay, but how do you convey it to the people in Luton? Because you were there painting a message, peace for Luton, mm. and you're talking to me on a radio show about mm. your commitment mm. to to peace, and I'm sure everybody yeah. is behind you in that. Yeah. But how do you convey it to? Um, to a community in Luton that might feel um, disenfranchised. Hmm. Oh, you're going to leave that to me? I know it sounds. Uh, <laughs> give me that. How question. do you convey it to the people of Luton? I mean, do you say come and look at our art, or do you do? You, I mean, do you go to classrooms and mm -hmm. talk about we, peace? We, or? we we do both those things, but I think. The, the reason why we find art so useful is that it's not doctrine like when you write a newspaper or a book people people take that as fact with art there's you no come, remit yeah with art you come a little bit more open-minded so for us we think it's about starting that journey towards changing perceptions between starting dialogues so people who might not talk to each other suddenly you yeah can, you can come around and that's so it's not the answer it's not the whole answer but it's a wonderful beautiful starting point well i think it is yeah. I'm Kate Robbins, sitting in for Nick Coffer, having a lovely time here at Three Counties Radio with my fascinating guests. I've got two artists here today, but they call themselves social innovators. And I don't know if I say that. I didn't sound, mean to sound patronising <laughs> when I said that. I'm sorry, did that sound awful? They call themselves social innovators. But the, no, you are very interesting in that you don't just want to be known as artists. You're peacemakers, you're... You're, well, you're on a mission, aren't you, really? Mm -hmm. um, business entrepreneurs as well. Business entrepreneurs yeah. as well. Well, that's what I like to hear. You make some money out of it. It's good. Um, now, guys, it's uh, Ben Hodgson and Ian Rowlands, by the way. W when you went to Iraq and painted the side of a mountain, I keep bringing that up because that is quite a fascinating thing to do. And I say you can't bring it back and put it in a gallery, but um, you are going to open a gallery you were telling me yeah we have a um a big show coming up in the spring of next year at, at the stockwood discovery center so and that's going to be really showing the work that we've collected and that we've produced out of this trip and we're going back as well in the autumn um to do a documentary and uh cut and is the theme well. of your exhibitions yeah. always going to be peace because it's a fantastic theme if it is yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think it'll always have that kind of aspect to it, but really it's about telling stories of people. We just love people. We just love telling stories well, about people. Well, this is it, isn't it? I mean, you know, and the word Iraq means so so much uh, people associated with so many fraught things, and of course it's just we're talking about people and families mm. in war-torn countries. And when you talk about uh, your your medium you use you, you were saying that documentary is one of your mm. you're going to be making yeah. another one or you've already made yeah, one yeah we we we've we've done a few smaller projects if you google my luton one of our producers dan atkins for hp media which is the commercial entity he has a short documentary already out there mm -hmm. and one of the uh, things we're doing with iraq is going back in november we can do some more shooting and we're hoping from that to tell a lot of these stories because we think they're exciting and hopefully other people will as well um but in 
that, we think it's important to get out another voice for Luton. So the, some of the documentaries that have come out mm. on the BBC and Channel 4 about some of the extremists in this town, mm. we feel don't represent the voice of Luton. So we're looking at pulling together a project with a consortium of other members, including okay. schools and colleges. But guys, I, I mean, d- would you go into Luton and, and paint a wall in Luton? I mean, I know you'd probably get well, arrested. Well, well, actually, we're actually th- looking at... When is it? Is September some September twenty first International yeah. Day of Peace? I think that's right. And we're looking at a project that either for this year or next year, where we actually very well might do that. Obviously, we wouldn't just go and do it. So, like, <laughs> not illegally. <laughs> not illegally. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you know, there's Banksy there yeah. making his yeah. um, his comments about society, isn't there? With yeah. his fantastic art. I mean, I love yeah. Banksy, but yeah. he's become a stencil now, so it's not yeah. quite the same yeah. anymore. No. Um, I mean, but if you you're not going like to deface anywhere. You're no. not going to... You see, a lot of people would be angry, and I yeah. have to put that to you. A lot yeah. of people wouldn't of like the idea yeah. of artists just painting anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think that depends on the culture and the context you're in. What is very interesting with... When we were painting this mountain in, in Iraq, every car or bus that came past beeped their horn and shouted and sh- cheered uh, for what we were doing. So that was interesting in itself. Mm. So what about the documentary? Who's going to be... Do you actually film that yourself, physically we, film it with your own cameras? And Yeah, yeah well, basically, um, the other director that we work with, uh, Josh Hodson, is also my little brother, although he's six foot five, so he's not very little. He uh, is is directing the film, but we're all producing and working on it. Hang on, um, your little brother's six foot five? He is, yes. OK, that just... <laughs> <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> you're um, quite young yourself. You see, I've got to tell the, 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 the oh, listeners. You're, how, do you mind me asking, Ben, your age? Um, I'm... I'm the grand old age of 26. 26, is, and you've yeah. got your first child? Yes, married for f- six years now. Right, so we can't say you should know better to you. Uh, <laughs> Ian, what about you? I, I'm 49, so I, <laughs> I'm a little bit older than that. <laughs> and I have three grown-up children. So it's, okay, well, oh. I mean, are you... Uh, I'm not going to ask your politics, because I don't ask my guests their politics, but I'm just going to say to you, are you... Well, okay, I'm going to ask you, do you have a faith? Yes, we do. You do have a faith? Uh, yeah, we uh, do. And what, what is your faith? Uh, we, we're Christians. We're Christians. So it's, uh, yeah. And you don't think that um, Muslims might feel patronised by Christians telling them to have some peace in their heart? No, what we're looking she for... She says it. contentiously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, actually, uh, we look to partner with, these, yeah. with, with Muslims. So, for instance, um, Ishmael is a Muslim. Uh, so we, we partner with them because we want to break down barriers and understanding and tolerance is a really important part of what we do and the is, message we bring. It is, of course. And I don't think there's anybody in the world who, of a right mind who doesn't want peace in the mm. world. Is there anybody who wants war? No, no of course there isn't. No. And, and, you know, with your art, I mean, you say you, you started out with photography. Uh, uh, sorry, Ian, you're a photographer yeah. And, yeah. and you now call yourself more of a, an artist who uses paint um, as a medium, Ben. Uh, yeah, I just use anything, really. I think everything I do, I see it as an outworking. So even business, installation, exhibition, video, photography, the works, really. So where can people, if, if they want to know more about you, now, a change, a change, a change of heart, is it? A changingheart.com has... A changingheart.com yeah. has got more information. On all the art projects. I mean, the, you know, the charity I mentioned, preemptivelove.org, that tells you all about them. Um, but a changingheart.com tells you about the whole Iraqi trip, 2009, this year, the mountain, it has the photos. Well, thank you so much for coming into the studio. Very thank interesting you. chaps. Thank That's you. Ben Rollins. Uh, ben, sorry, Ian Rollins <laughs> and Ben Hodgson. I got you mixed up there. Yeah, we're not thank married. you. And I wish Thanks, you Kate. well in all that you do. Mm.